We are in Sumter County, Alabama at Fort Tom Beckby. On this spot of ground on the Tom Bigby River, France, England, and Spain once claimed this land as their own. This site is incredibly important to the colonial history of the United States and to Alabama specifically. In 1736, Governor Bienville of Louisiana came here to establish a fort and with his Choctaw allies, they hoped to leave this spot and attack the Chickasaws upriver. The Chickasaws were allied with the English, the traditional enemies of the French, and the Chickasaws were traditional enemies of the Choctaws. The battle didn't go well, but the fort remained as an important trading post and diplomatic center for the French until 1763. We know a lot about Fort Tom Beckby's history. We have written documents. We have maps of the fort, so we know basically what it looked like. We have drawings of some of the buildings, and we know about a lot of the important figures who were here. But what we don't know about Fort Tom Beckby is what daily life was like for the men who were stationed here. We don't know what it was like for the slaves that were here working at the fort. And we don't know a lot of specific everyday details about the relationships between the French soldiers here and the Choctaw Indians on whom they relied for so much. And that's why we do archaeology. Although we have documents and maps and drawings, we know the dates, we don't know about daily life. The only way we can learn about the daily life, the really interesting parts of these people's lives, is through archaeology. One question that archaeologists get is, how do you know where to dig? Well, the answer is, you can look at historic maps, where there might be an indication of an old Indian mound or an old farmstead. You can ask local people. Farmers are known to plow up all kinds of artifacts in their fields, and they often know where to find archaeological sites. But if you can't see anything on the ground surface, then you'll take a round point shovel and you'll dig a series of small holes in a pattern. When you dig the hole, you put the dirt in a screen like this one. You'll shake all the dirt through, and if you have artifacts in your screen, then you know that there's a pretty good chance that there's human activity, or there used to be human activity in that site, and you probably have an archeological site. At Fort Tom Beckby, we're really lucky because the location of the fort has never been lost. And we also have a series of earthworks that extend around the fort and date to the late 18th century. As you can see behind me, the earth rises in a long straight line. This is part of the fort that was built by the Spanish when they occupied the site from 1794 to 1797. On top of these earthworks was a wooden wall that rose another 10 feet. When the Spanish were here in the late 1790s, they were building a fort to defend themselves against American artillery or American cannons because the Spanish knew there was a good chance that they had built their fort not only on top of the remains of Fort Tom Beckby, but well within the territory of the new United States. So where do all these artifacts come from? How do they get into the ground? Well, it's important to remember that until really recently, people didn't have weekly garbage pickup. For you and your family, you take your trash, you put it into a trash can, and then you gather it all up at some point during the week and put it into a larger garbage can that you set out by the road. The garbage truck comes by, picks up everybody's garbage, and takes it to a central place, to the dump. That's a very recent development in American history. Prior to that, people had to deal with the garbage on their own. They would either bury it, they would burn it, sometimes they would just toss it down an old outhouse or privy. It was really crunched up, swept under the house, broken up underfoot, and remained around the house. Hopefully it wasn't too smelly. But this is really a good thing for archaeologists because what we have to study from the past is only the things that people leave behind. Everything that we're looking at are broken dishes, remains from meals in the form of bones or seeds, 
broken glass, all of these things, stone tools, bits of nails, bricks, all of this is basically garbage. It's sort of a myth that archaeologists just dig up treasure. That's something that would be really special, and that's why you see it in Hollywood movies. Most of what we deal with, most of what we find in the ground, are bits and pieces of garbage that are left behind from daily life. Behind me, you can see students excavating in several units that would have been located just behind the barracks where the enlisted men spent most of their time. They're looking for evidence of daily life. They're looking for smoking pipes and bits of pottery and evidence for weapons or other things that could give us insight into how these people lived. One of the problems with working at Fort Tom Beckby is this big bluff line that you see behind the students behind me. That would have been a really convenient place for people to toss their trash. So we don't find quite as many artifacts associated with this barrack site as we might at another site because a lot of it was just thrown over the edge. All right, some of you may have seen on television archaeology being done. And you may have wondered, why do archaeologists dig in square holes? Why don't we just take a shovel and go at the dirt and pull out all the artifacts? Well, the answer is that when we do archaeology, we're actually destroying the site. When you take artifacts out of the ground or you move the dirt, you can't put them back the way that they were found exactly. So archaeologists carefully destroy the site. We do this in a very systematic uh, way, and we are making squares on the XY Cartesian coordinate system. Those of you in the fifth and sixth grades probably know about this. And by gridding off the site in particular squares, we're actually putting a puzzle on top of the site and removing it one piece at a time. Another thing you may have wondered about archaeology is why we dig really slowly. We do that in part not to break any of the artifacts we might find, but the main reason is because we're slowly reading the history of every archaeological site. Archaeological sites are put down in layers, and each layer represents a chapter in the history of that site. Now, when you read your favorite book, you don't take an apple core to it and just dig into that book and pull out all the pretty words or the pretty phrases. You read that book very carefully, one page at a time, one chapter at a time trying to keep all of the words and phrases together and reading it chapter by chapter by chapter, keeping it in order. This is how an archaeologist reads an archaeological site. The artifacts are like the words, and keeping all of the artifacts together from one layer is like keeping those sentences from one chapter together. Except in archaeology, when we dig, we're digging from the most recent chapter down to the oldest chapter. So it's like reading a book backwards. And that's why archaeologists dig carefully and dig layers, removing one page of history at a time. All right, so what happens to all of the dirt that we excavate? You've seen us excavating and you've seen us putting dirt in buckets. What happens to that dirt? Well, the dirt first gets a tag. And the tag tells us exactly which square yeah. and which layer or chapter of the archaeological site that the dirt came from. Then the dirt is brought over to the screen. This screen has holes in it that are one quarter inch large. That means anything smaller than a quarter inch is going to fall through the screen into the wheelbarrow. All of the artifacts are going to be left in the screen. We pull all of the artifacts out and we'll put them into a bag that has the same information on it that the tag did. That way, we take the bag of artifacts back to the laboratory and we know exactly what part of the archaeological site this came from. All of the dirt that falls through will eventually be put back into the unit to fill it up for safety. One of the most important parts of archaeology is taking good notes, keeping record of what you've dug and where 
you're digging and what you're finding is what separates archaeology from just digging. Every unit or square that we excavate has paperwork associated with it. On this paperwork, we keep a record of what we've been finding, of the nature of the soil, and we make drawings of things that we find as we go. Sometimes we even make extra drawings to show exactly what we've been finding, how deep we find it, and the relationship of one artifact to another. We make drawings of the profiles or the sides of the units. Each one of these represents one of the layers in the soil. So in this way, we're recreating on paper the story of the archeological site. The least glamorous part of doing archeology span is backfilling. That's right, we move the dirt twice. We dig it out and then we put it back in. But the reason we do this is because if we had big open holes in the ground, the rain would eventually erode the sides and undo all that careful excavating that we did. So lining these units with plastic and then putting dirt on top of them will protect them from the elements for the future. And should we ever want to come back and have a look at them again, we'll be able to with a lot more ease. Welcome to the Archaeology Lab. This is where artifacts end up after we've excavated them at the archaeological site. It's a common saying among archaeologists that for every one day you spend digging up an artifact, you'll spend four days in the laboratory washing and labeling and studying that artifact. The first step is to wash the artifact. It's always good to work with clean pieces. The second step is to label the artifact with the information that tells us exactly where on the site the, the artifact came from. And then finally, we analyze that artifact by the type of material it's made of, how it's made, how it was used, and how old it is. Sometimes we build up enough experience to be able to look at one artifact and know exactly where it's from and how old it is. A lot of times we have to rely on guidebooks that were written by experts in certain types of materials. All of this information is put together to tell the complete story of the people who made and used and broke the artifacts. After analysis, artifacts are carefully stored in special archival bags and boxes. These are things that won't easily decay and won't chemically react with the artifacts. These acid-free blue boxes contain material that was excavated from Fort Tom Beckby in 1980. Everything is carefully labeled with the information about the part of the site and the small piece of ground from which the artifacts were removed. And as you can see, everything is organized so that researchers in the future can come back and study these collections as well. Some artifacts are so distinctive or so important or, se or give us so much information that we keep them set aside in this cabinet. Here are some examples of ceramic pieces that were excavated from Fort Tom Beckby. On this small piece, you can see these very distinctive pieces of paint and designs that show us exactly when this piece of pottery was made and used at the site. In another drawer, we have some personal items that would have been used by the soldiers who lived in the barracks at Fort Tom Beckby. This is a clay smoking pipe. In this little box over here, we have a shell made, uh, a shell bead that was probably made by Choctaw Indians and perhaps even worn by one of the soldiers at the fort. It was found also near the barracks. In this little box, we have a stone that was made into a gun flint. This was necessary for creating a spark, spark igniting the black powder and firing the gun. And here are the musket balls that were the ammunition fired out of those guns. Occasionally we find very personal items such as this brass button. You can see on the outside of the bag 
all of the information that tells us it came from Fort Tom Beckby, that it came from a particular unit, from a particular level, and other information about its location. It's also written on the paper tag, and then some of the most important information is transferred to a label onto the artifact itself. Thank you for joining me on this tour of archaeology in the field and in the lab and learning a little bit more about Fort Tom Beckby. I hope you have learned about how archaeology is done, what it is, what it isn't, and how it helps us learn about the past.